This is NDTV. And you're watching NDTV Profit. on India's top cities. Each week, starting today, we will bring you the key highlights of top cities of the country and get a perspective on its real estate from all stakeholders, developers, consultants and brokers. At what pace are developers launching new projects? Which are the best performing micro markets? How are sales doing? How are prices moving? And how will they counter a general gloom-doom scenario staring at us? Let's begin with the south of the Vindyas, Bengaluru and Chennai. Today and top of the debate, we'll take Bangaluru with our panel, Sushil Mantri, CMD Mantri Developers, C. Prabhakar, Director Gopalan Enterprises, Gulam Zia, Executive Director Knight Frank, Sachin Nigam, Senior Director, Crystal Real Estate, Star Ratings, and Samir Jasuja, Founder and CEO of Prop Equity. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us today. I'm actually going to read out this very interesting data, which both Knight Frank Report and the Prop Equity Report support, that this has been the city with the largest increase a jump percentage increase in new launches you've seen first half of the current calendar year seeing a jump of 50 percent in new launches and the good news is that demand is also extremely robust it has kept up and the city has registered a strong new launch absorption figure of 93 percent mr mantri what's going on in bangaluru there seems to be an insatiable appetite for real estate in your city no, I think uh, the credit uh, goes to the maturity of developers because if you see the prices in Bangalore, they are quite uh, affordable. You take a comparison, I would say like uh, in Bangalore, say Hebal market is about six to 7,000 rupees square feet is apartment price. And if you compare uh, Gurgaon in Delhi, it's about 12 to 13,000. The affordability, I think in Bangalore is fairly well because builders have kept the prices under control. And uh, that is the reason I think the demand is still robust and I hope uh, the same will continue from all the sites. Mm. Okay. You know, you mentioned a really interesting point. You said builders have kept the prices sane and I think that's borne out very well, Samir, from the data that we have in front of us. Of course, we'll get to the micro markets. Uh, Sushil Mantri mentioned Hebel. It's been one of the biggest performers in terms of A, price appreciation and also new launches. Overall, 10%, that's the average that Bangalore is looking at a good steady sort of a market yeah i would uh, agree with you because i think bangalore first of all is an end users market mm. and very little investment kind of uh, investor class is there as such although i can definitely feel that there's a huge investment class that got originated in bangalore over the last three four years especially with respect to developments that were being sold near the airport area and hebel and yalahanka classic examples of that where prices have run away also because of a lot of investment going there from investors other than end users but rightfully so i would say because of the main reason is that a large amount of employment generation is happening over there thanks to say the manetta tech park also the airport has got the, the city's got extended and that's the most emerging real estate destination of bangalore mm. closer to the city and close to the airport so whenever a micro market or a region like that emerges it does see a lot of action sees price appreciation and i think all the eyes are set in those two regions compared to the other parts of bangalore all right so and we'll come to the micro markets a little bit later overview mr gopalan uh, sushil mantri says the reason is that you know uh, developers have kept a certain quality and prices haven't gone up so much Prices have been rather sane and that's perhaps the reason why Bangalore continues to exhibit such robustness. Is that correct? Yeah, uh, Manisha. In fact, uh, Bangalore has been uh, the best performing markets uh, you know, uh, in the country by and large because uh, we have been consistently delivering uh, projects, you know, completing the projects on time. Uh, you know, there is a, a, a possession uh, guarantee which the builders are able to provide now. But uh, more so, uh, there is a balanced uh, development in uh, residential, commercial, SEZ and retail which is going on as well as social infrastructure which has built uh, um, uh, a good macro climate uh, 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 for investment as well as for living. That has really helped the city uh, uh, be, uh, have a steady growth uh, in, uh, in the past few years. Okay. 
Uh, Sachin, what do you feel? The, the one big point that we've also discussed on this show, now NCR, almost every day we look at uh, developers promising a three-year delivery time frame and it just doesn't happen. Bangalore, Mr. Gopalan says, is very good on delivery. Do you think that the three years parameter where, you know, the comfort that the buyer has, he will get his flat in three, three and a half years, is a big driving factor for buyers? Yeah, it certainly is because that's one of the things that the buyer looks because uh, it also depends as to what kind of market it is. Now in Bangalore, as uh, you know, somebody mentioned, is an uh, end user driven market at this point of time. And for an end user, the delivery and the possession of his flat is a very, very important aspect uh, in his decision making. And uh, you know, when he sees that comfort, coming through in terms of getting the projects, uh, you know, uh, uh, possessions of them, then uh, that obviously leads to a good feel-good factor through the market. You, we keep reiterating the point, Gulam, that Bengaluru is a end-user market, but more and more I'm beginning to see that there is an investor class also emerging in Bengaluru. It's really not just... When you say end user, yes, it might be an IT professional who owns a home and would like to invest in one home. It may not be the way flats are sold in North India through intermediaries, through brokers, large commitments, channel partners. But would it be that easy to define Bangalore as a completely end user market? Well, to begin with, uh, let's look at uh, the consumer profiling. As we spoke about, it's essentially driven by the demand coming out of IT, ITS industry. And uh, this is one industry which is uh, very, very professionally driven. And uh, hence, the kind of people who are the end users, the buyers of the property are essentially end users and professionals who want a certain uh, a way of uh, how the whole transaction is handled. Uh, what I'm trying to do is uh, to differentiate the market of Bangalore with, say, an NCR or the rest of the country where the, the buyers are of uh, different types, I'm, so I'm talking about industries, coming from say, uh, 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 for that matter, say manufacturing as uh, one sector, or uh, say NCR would be driven hugely by the, the policy makers, the administrators, etc., who are the big uh, chunk of buyers. Unlike all that here is one sector which is more of professionals and hence the, the, the transactions reflect that, that aspect of that. And second thing is look at the size of the market. It is not hugely overboard. Like for example, in Bangalore, you still look at about 30,000 uh, housing unit sales per year, vis-a-vis -vis a Delhi which boasts of uh, you know close to 100,000 units in a year, which also gives a very wide range of buyers. Once again, and one more point and the culmination of my dialogue or of my argument is that this is one city which in last couple of years has done a lot on improvements on its infrastructure. What, how it helps is that the land values have remained under check. So going from one point to the other, if there is a good road network available to you, uh, uh, the land values will obviously uh, be compared from one corner of the city to the other, which will have the whole uh, uh, you know, land, which is a major input into uh, construction of real estate, under check, which also obviously reflects into the price of the product. And if the price of the product has remained, say, about 150 or 200 basis point upwards of your inflation rate, then it is not one market which is very, very punter driven or, or very high risk driven market. It's a very stable market. So ultimately, the only point I'm trying to drive across is perhaps Bangalore is the most matured market of India and hence the, the, the prices have remained under check and hence investors don't find that they can't make a killing in a day and try to you know, pull out the next. And then hence, it has remained a very, very secure market for end users and by uh, the, the, the investors have kept away from this market all this while. All right, so mature markets, same markets, some of the terminologies which definitely describe or give Bangalore a heads up on any other top city of the country. Like I'm sure there are some, uh, some rough spots there. I mean, I'll come to the infrastructure a little bit later, but you go ahead, Samir. Yeah, I'd like to make a few more important points. Uh, one thing uh, that we haven't discussed is the highest amount of FSI is also in Bangalore. Mm -hmm. That's why the land prices are in check. So typically you can get really? four. Is yeah, absolutely. You can get three and a half to four FSI without a problem over there. You can do a condo project in three to five acres very easily compared to a Mumbai or an NCR region where you need minimum of 11 acres or Mumbai, for example, you just don't have the land. 
and your FSI is only 1.75 or 1.5 and you really have to get FSI through TDI in, in Mumbai, for example. So it's very difficult. So that's an important that's point. That's a very critical point. And the that second you most said. important point is that IT industry is probably the only industry that hasn't got badly affected because of this economy and the dollar has been strengthening. So because of these two factors also, Bangalore sales are witnessing uh, compared to uh, Mumbai or NCR, much higher absorption. Hmm. Mr. Madri, run me through the infrastructure bit. I mean, Samir's pointed out a couple of very interesting facts here, FSI, etc. But run me through infrastructure. I, I would say that, uh, yes, there are, you know, good initiatives on the infrastructure development, but still the, the city's infrastructure isn't really keeping pace with what the real estate sector would consider ideal. In fact, it's far from it. No, I think what we are really missing in Bangalore is the infrastructure planning because the metro railway work is going in full speed. But you know the total metro, unless the entire connectivity get established, people will not stop using the car and use totally metro because today it is uh, hardly 7-8 kilometer running and it is likely that by December it will run about 10 more kilometer. But that's not a continuous so that the people have to bring the car. But I think uh, now we got a single government with a majority and we are expecting uh, because first time it has happened center and state the same, same government is there. We are expecting a good infrastructure push now the government will put because Bangalore is really lacking for the infrastructure. And if uh, the infrastructure is made uh, to a, up to like a Hyderabad standard, I personally feel uh, things will be totally different in Bangalore because today commuting is a real challenge. Absolutely. In fact, Mr. Gopalan, give me your views on infrastructure. There are lots of things happening, road widening from Hebel to the International Airport, Metro Rail we've just spoken about, there's North-South Connect, Nagasandra with Putinhali. There's just, you know, we'll keep flashing all those uh, initiatives as we have this discussion, including the high-speed rail link. But, you know, when I speak to a low-cost housing Com uh, company which is looking at low cost housing like uh, value budget housing, they still have such issues regarding connectivity and say, how do we ever give affordable homes considering that land is available cheap only at the outskirts and connectivity isn't there? See, uh, like any developing uh, city, the, the growth here is far uh, more than uh, the development uh, of infrastructure, you know. And also now you see uh, being a stable, a stable government uh, coming into city, we hope a lot more uh, you know, uh, development will, uh, we can foresee. But uh, what uh, I feel the potential here among uh, Bangalore developers is, we have taken the role of a city planner, you know, because see when large projects are being planned, you know, so uh, there is a thought provided, you know, put into the community, uh, development, you know, which is initiated by the government here, state government. So that I feel will sh will really help in uh, in in these uh, this infrastructure coming up, as well as the developers' role in 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 uh, in developing the infrastructure. But you see, today uh, our developers here in Bangalore have been quite innovative uh, and coming out with projects like uh, walk to work uh, kind of a projects, which are all uh, township projects, which uh, 60, 70 acres of land where you have residential, commercial, retail and school all in one big campus. No? Right. Such uh, kind of initiatives and innovative projects are coming up which will I feel really help in uh, the congestion in the city, the pollution in the city and also help in uh, uh, use being uh, the productive time, you know, being able to use as much as possible. No? Hmm? Fair enough. So, so lots of points uh, emerging from travel. Bangalore. Yeah. Even this, uh, you know, walk to work concept. Uh, Gulam, just just give me a sense in terms of the key areas which Bangalore is right now missing out on. Infrastructure seems to be still a gap, but do you think that the government, as Mr. Gopalan mentioned, a far more stable government with no disruptions could actually get that also on a high speed? Well, uh, as I said, uh, infrastructure initiatives are already uh, on, on, on the roll. And uh, this, like if I pick up the point which my colleagues on the panel have been making, that it is happening in spite of uh, two different governments at center and the state. So for once, if we have both uh, same party managing both these uh, forts, then I'm sure there'll be much more pressure, much more thrust on uh, developing these infrastructure initiatives. So at least I don't see infrastructure as a missing link yet. 
uh, if I compare the Bangalore of today with uh, what I have seen say about a decade back or even half a decade back, people used to dread to go towards uh, electronic city or the old airport side, which today has changed drastically. In fact, electronic city is, uh, uh, is a new emerging location because of uh, improved infrastructure, because of improved, improved connectivity and so on. The gap, uh, however, I would uh, uh, nonetheless uh, uh, focus on is availability of cheaper land. What we're talking about is still something which can give you uh, uh, land inputs for doing a product of about three and a half thousand rupees a square foot, which is kind of an average price across Bengaluru. But then, if I'm talking about doing something for, say, uh, uh, two thousand rupees and under two thousand rupees, an apartment for uh, ten lakh rupees or say fifteen lakh of rupees, etc., that is still a tough task, and for which obviously you have to go towards uh, farther ends of the city, and connectivity has to actually reach those areas. But having said that, you know, uh, we at times end up uh, talking a lot about affordable housing without, uh, you know, uh, taking the whole context, context in mind. Like if I talk about the city where I come from, Mumbai, you have to look at the stark contrast here. On one end, you have 100,000 rupees a square foot as a price. On the other side, you're talking about catering to that 2,000 rupee market, which is once again the same affordable housing limit in Mumbai as well. And here, the problem is much more enormous. So cities like Bangalore, etc., we still are talking about you know a price band of three and a half thousand rupees thereabouts, which is not too bad from affordability perspective. All right. So you're saying that Bangalore hasn't become so unaffordable that we need to you know harp about the affordable housing segment just yet. But then there is a big missing link. 10 to 15, 25 lakh homes are going missing as land prices are becoming expensive. And like we just told you, Bangalore overall price appreciation has been 10 percent if you compare 2012 first half to the second half or the first half of 2013. We're going to be back in a moment. We're going to look at some the micro market picture and tell you which according to our panel are some of the hottest markets in Bengaluru and what's going on in each of these markets. You're watching our real estate debate which is city specific getting you larger and broader perspective on some of India's top cities and of course the kickoff is with the city which is at the top of the pipe, Bengaluru. to a real estate debate on the big cities of India. Bangalore is in focus and if we look at the prop equity data, price appreciation as expected has been a decent and a modest 10% if you take an average of the budget housing, the mid and premium and the luxury housing. So that 10% and of course six or seven key micro markets. So you have to take that with a lot of disclaimers. So we are going to now just drill down these numbers and look at some of the key micro markets. Northeast, Whitefield, Hebel, Northwest, Yalahanka, you have Southeast, Electronic City in Hosu Road, ORR in Marthali, and the Southwest, Banargata Road. The numbers will come on your screen, but if I look at just the change, it's clearly been Hebel, 34% increase, followed by Yalahanka, 17%. Samir Jasuja, I was very surprised to see this data. And Whitefield, of course, is a far more modest number. One would think everybody wants to buy in Whitefield. That's not the case. Yeah. I think a pr at the right, it's a very price sensitive market. If Hebel and Yalahanka are cheaper, offer you better quality or equal in quality, people are willing to also look at those markets. So first of all, you have to compare a Whitefield and Hebel, uh, sorry, a Hebel and Yalahanka to a market like the Golf Course Extension or Dwarka Expressway in NCR region or in for example if you're looking at Navi Mumbai you have to look at the Khargar area and all that these are emerging micro markets where a the good part is that employment generation has happened mm -hmm. so that's why maximum number of new launches are happening maximum amount of absorption is happening and developers are raising the bar by launching one luxury project after the other and taking the primary prices up so I would say a that Yes, you have to take these appreciation figures with a little bit of pinch of salt because if you were to go out in the market to resell your unit, you may not witness this kind of appreciation. So, Bangalore as a market also has now a gap between new launches and resale prices? Absolutely. I, I would say in certain micro markets. Certain and micro only market. those micro markets with respect to the, uh, the ones that are close to the airport area where there's a lot of investment that went in 
over the last three, four years, and a lot of appreciation happened. And then this market, this this is becoming the central most market or the most emerging market over the next five years. This will mm -hmm. be probably one of the best markets to stay in. Whereas Whitefield has been an established market for the last. 10 years. So not much action happening over there. It's already a secondary market, I would say. So if you see overall black gold appreciation 10% is because secondary markets over there are, are, are end user markets. They are, they are they're linked to inflation. There's not too much happening over there. And the prices are being driven by new markets which are offering better potential. Sujil Mantri, would you agree with that? I also see a JLL report which identifies uh, Whitefield as one of the hot spots of future real estate markets to invest or buy into. What would you have to say in terms of key micro markets, which are the ones that one should keep a close eye on? No, I personally feel uh, Whitefield is uh, definitely a old established market. But if you see the all the where IT companies are there, more the growth we are observing. Now, if you take it as South Bangalore or uh, Whitefield, and because of now the ring road, nice ring road taken place, electronic city has become very convenient for Kanakpura road. That is also growing in a big segment because the metro connectivity is getting established there. So I would say in Bangalore about 4-5 packets are there where the demand is uh, definitely very good because looking to the possibility of the IT companies as well as the metro connectivity or highway connectivity. So you're laying your bets on Southeast. We're talking about electronic city. You said Hosur, Oharar and Marthahali. Would that be your pick, uh, Mr. Mantri? Yeah, absolutely right. Hmm. Mr. Gopalan, what do you think? I mean, uh, if you were to look at some of the markets, I'm just looking at, of course, this is crunch data of first half of 2012 vis-a-vis -vis first half of 2013. Yelahanka and Hebel seem to emerge both the biggest markets in terms of new launches, also in terms of price appreciation. See, uh, Manisha, uh, Whitefield pr primarily uh, uh, focuses on the big market segment, you know, catering more to IT employees, ITS employees, uh, buying houses in and around that area, you know, where, which is a very large segment, you know. Whereas Yelanka and uh, Hebal Junction have some signature properties, so it is catering to a very high-end segment uh, by and large, you know. But uh, I feel uh, as an investment wise, the, the, uh, there is a lot of future in, uh, in investment in uh, Whitefield because Whitefield though it is a self-contained uh, 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 sector, there is a possibility of growth towards Old Montrose Road as well. You know? So there is an extension of Whitefield you see it coming towards Old Montrose Road where uh, big large new projects are coming up. You know? Also, the rental uh, uh, income when you see in Whitefield area, be uh, you know coming from uh, ITS uh, companies, have been fairly good. You know, so that I feel is a very stable market. Whereas Yelanka and Hebal also is more for uh, signature building people who are looking at uh, larger uh, uh, you know, prime properties in the city. An extension of Sadashiv Nagar in that area is is what my take on this market. You know. Mm -hmm. Sachin, what's your take? Uh, if, would you agree that Whitefield still cannot be dismissed? It's a market that you need to keep a close eye on. Amongst all the markets that we are speaking about, where would you put your money? Well, I think uh, to answer your question, I think you can't write off Whitefield. And uh, it's, it's an extremely, uh, you know, well-established market. It has the infrastructure all around it. Uh, there, there is a clear, uh, uh, you know, wo of office spaces all close by and everything. So it's got a lot of things going on for it. And I think my personal view is that you can't compare, uh, uh, you know, Hebel Junction or Yelahanka with Whitefield because they are at different stages of life cycle, if I may use that word. These ones are the ones which are emerging whereas Whitefield is already an established. So it obviously caters to different segments as well. And uh, at the end of it, any micro market for that matter will grow on account of economic activities in and around. And that would mean also mean connectivity and various other things. And that, in that sense, you know, Whitefield is, is uh, very well established and so are uh, Ilhanka and uh, Hebel in terms of the various new inf initiatives that are being taken for those markets. All right, so I, I'm sure that uh, neither Mr. Mantri nor Mr. Gopalan would have anything uh, negative to say about the cities that they are in. But I'm going to toss this question to you, Gulam. Looking at the economic scenario around, do you think that Bangalore can come out a little less catched? 
I'm sorry if I can uh, get that question again less less damage in terms of you know slow down face staring at a slow down do you think that they would be able to ride it out the best amongst all cities well i would go by that uh, the re simple reason is uh, as as somebody mentioned on the panel discussion today itself is that uh, <laughs> essentially the driver is it it yes and that's one uh, 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 industry which has been really doing bad and going forward as well also getting the the benefit of the the depreciation of rupee etc it's one city which will continue to be in uh, in uh, you know the driver stage for it it yes and that will have an impact on real estate and uh, at least going forward i don't see the city to uh, you know concern much and then i i heard your question well you were talking about all of them are talking positive if you're looking up to me for a negative i'm sorry even i don't have one this is one city which has uh, pretty much all of it going its way samir then the question comes to you is the city going to ride out a big slowdown i mean we've already said that there are cities which are showing all signs of slowness if i look at the inventory overhang figures in most of the markets even hebel which is doing very well inventory overhang figures 23 months and this was not the case a year ago when we were looking at this data so sales have slowed down yes absolutely right in the luxury segment especially sales have slowed down i was just talking to a few developers uh, before this and they were saying that if they were selling 10 units a month from jan to march that has come down to about 5 units from april to september mm -hmm. things are looking up again but if you were to look at the last 6 months sales have come down by 50, 40 to 50% in the luxury segment sachin what's your view well i think uh, there are some segments which are surely seeing a slow down luxury segment being one but at the lower end of the spectrum i think the the sales are still uh, fairly decent uh, is about by are you saying flats can... below 50 lakhs what's the pricing point i would say in the range of 25 to 40 lakhs you are still seeing uh, you know uh, fairly decent demand and uh, just to take off from what zero was saying you know bangalore what go what goes for bangalore is the fact that it has got fairly very well balanced uh, demographic uh, you know landscape so to speak when it comes to employment opportunity so it's it it yes yes but it is also there are some very large public sector uh, undertakes and takings which are there there are about 100 of the top 500 fortune 500 companies which are there so it has got a very very good mix of of uh, uh, you know uh, companies around also the fact that it is also a very big educational hub and uh, has got several things going for it would always mean that there will always be a migration to bangalore from the rest of the uh, places in terms of uh, highly skilled workforce and even at lower end as well which would keep the demand going for the city fair enough sushil mantri are you building in for slow sales are you thinking rethinking and you know in terms of how quickly you should be launching projects is there a sense of caution which is now gripping bangalore developers or not yet no i don't think so because the prices are fairly in control and uh, i think uh, the 10% rise which uh, uh, someone expected i think that is the uh, like a inflation so frankly speaking i think uh, it's a cost of replacement i would say mm -hmm. and i feel the same trend looks like uh, should continue further All right, Mr. Gopalan, what's your take in terms of a real slowdown? Because you know, if you look at the rupee, if you look at the GDP numbers, if you look at the stock markets, you look all around you. There is this sense that you know, when people are more worried about their job security, they tend to stay away from large, high-ticket purchases, and housing is definitely one of them. You could also see a reversal in terms of the interest rate cycle. Yeah, but uh, you know, considering all these factors, you no know, external factors, I feel. Uh, because uh, most of the houses are bought by end users and the market is very much strong in the mid and the lower mid segment uh, market you know the affordability segment uh, the budget segment has has just uh, very nascent in bangalore you know so most of the big builders are also uh, taking their uh, you know uh, uh, you know uh, the uh, projects in the, in those segments as well i think uh, for now the mid segment and the and the budget segment has got a very big demand has a very good demand uh, in the city and new emerging areas to look forward is uh, kanakpura road and mysore road also are uh, you know there are a lot more possibilities of uh, residential development in those areas now mm -hmm. 
Fair enough. I'm going to wrap out here with the Bangalore panel, Mrs. Sushil Mantri and Mr. Gopalan. Thank you, gentlemen, for being here. Of course, your city definitely bags uh, the top spot in terms of market maturity and the offering to the end customer. And we hope to see that continuing in the future as well. Talking about Bangalore, just a reminder that we do have a very, very unique web show lined up for you, for you to see, feel, experience the top residential projects from five of the finest developers of Bangalore City. The web show starts on 26th August. NDTV.com is where you need to log on to. We're going to be back with another market which is not too far behind in terms of the quality that they offer to the customer. That's Chennai South always wins against the North and the West when it comes to just simple delivery. So we'll deep dive into the Chennai market, bring you of course the hottest uh, markets there, micro markets and tell you what's been going on in terms of delivery launches and price appreciation.